Welcome to New Artland, the series in which legendary New Zealand artists take a piece of Aotearoa that means something to them, come up with an epic artistic concept and gather a team of locals to help make that vision a reality. I'm a soldier! Back in the 1970s, if I had told you that in 2008, Pororua, the state house capital of New Zealand, would have a community gallery staging an exhibition made up purely of Samoan artists, you'd have told me I was nuts. You'd have packed me off to the local Pororua mental hospital. Because back then, the only thing Samoans were known for in this neck of the woods was for being dragged bodily out of bed by the cops during the infamous dawn raids. Samoans, overstayers. Michael Tuffery is from the next generation of Samoans, many of whom were born in New Zealand. And his art reflects a totally new and utterly different experience of New Zealand urban life. Tuffery is a painter, sculptor, stencil and graffiti artist and a sound and video designer. He creates a multitude of powerful images, everything from shiny blowflies and Captain Cook right through to giant balls and his busy Seaview studio in Lower Hutt. The last thing I can remember eating as a meat eater was a can of corned beef. I used to love it in sandwiches, eh? So when I saw your bull, it was just like, oh, I love this man's stuff. But I've got to confess, that's pretty much all I know about your artwork. So you want to fill me in a bit? I've just been painting, doing installations, and yeah, just doing quite a variety of different sort of art forms. So I sort of don't stick to one genre. Not one day is actually the same, it's sort of like it's a new problem that arises and then I try and solve it or I, I try a new um, uh, medium and then another problem pops up and then I try and solve it and try and make something from it. So I'm always trying to play with different mediums. It just keeps things interesting because I'm always, I want to try something new and present it or trying to figure out a different way of presenting it. What you gonna do for us? <laughs> I want to, like I said, go back to the difficult bit. I have done some pieces where I sort of made it so that um, like the blind people could actually feel the image. You imagine sound and it could make colours from it. Just if you could use the sound in that way, and I thought with the Iroquois sound, that, 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 that booming sound, that bass sound, and I thought there was something quite interesting there. I'm pu purely curious to see what the sound would do if you have a mass of these Iroquois coming through the valleys that are there. So the artwork is going to be a bunch of Helicopters coming towards yeah, some people. Yeah, recording the sound, yeah. Oh, recording it? Yeah, recording the sound oh, and okay. then treating it and then taking it into a space in town, into Wellington. Like, I've asked for the railway station in that big, beautiful space. Because I've worked there as news, newspapers and when I was a kid, so and I know how that sound could travel. What if you cause a mass panic in the transit system in, in Wellington and, uh, you know, you have to pay millions of dollars damages? It still sort of attracts and gets everyone talking, what the hell was that all about? Mm. And for me, that's what the art's supposed to do is, is, well, I feel that's one of the things that art is contributing or making you think rather than just sort of going through the norm of the day. But the hard bit will be the one is to try and present, represent the sound and try and duplicate that sort of same anxiety or that same sort of shit here they come or here comes those, uh, that, the Iroquois. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I love extreme sound, so mm -hmm. it's totally my cup of tea.
Kennans Creek is a less than affluent suburb in Porirua East, but it's a suburb close to Michael's heart. His youngest girl goes to preschool just down the road, and he's really keen to enlist the help of the kids from Cannons Creek School. Why on earth are we here? Oh, we're here to take some kids up to, or some children up from Cannons Creek up to Ohakia, and sort of give them a real experience, not just visually, but sort of audio as well, you know, with the uh, Iroquois helicopters. Why Cannons Creek? Because the, you know, the bad rap it usually gets, and I just like looking at all the positives of it, you know, looking at those little dreamers. You know, so I was like one of the, like a little dreamer when I was a little kid. So the kids are almost as important a part of them as the sound, huh? Yeah, definitely, because it's the energy that they're giving off. So is this a normal sort of school project for you, Ruth? No, I don't think so. No, I think it's a little bit out of the ordinary, but um, certainly, you know, a wonderful opportunity for the children. And I mean, that, that's the main thing is trying to give our children as many opportunities as we can. And this one's certainly, yeah, quite left field and <laughs> not what they're used to at all, but something that I'm sure they'll really enjoy. I mean, you're talking about giving these kids an experience, but are, are you talking to them about it being an art experience as such? I think so, in certain terms, yes. I mean, um, firstly and foremost, it's an experience. It's just something, you know, for uh, an opportunity for them to be involved in something. But as you say, the, the core of the thing is about the arts and, and experiencing arts. And, and part of the art curriculum is about giving children opportunities to, to view and see and hear art. So um, certainly it would fit into those sorts of, um, those strands of the art curriculum. Because my daughter goes up to the school just up the road at Waitangi Rua, I thought uh, I'd come and choose you guys and actually take you guys up to a Ahakia for the day to uh, see the Iroquois helicopters, to actually listen to the sound of the helicopters. And then also talk to the pilots that day and then we'll sort of have a little bit of conversation about um, the whole art of actually sound. Think about last week. What did we hear last week when you were out in the playground? Oh, yeah. The helicopter. Oh, the helicopter. OK, what sound, do you, yeah, what sort of sound do you think it actually makes? Because there's different sounds from, it's quite a, is it a bassy sound or is it a, like a, like a, drum. yeah, a lot of bass, like a drumming sound? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a little. It's spinning class now. We're basically going to treat the sound like I was saying before and then we'll make a, like a nice little uh, CD from it so we can actually uh, play the sound down the railway station. So what will happen is the audience, as they're walking past, they'll be all trying to figure out where the sound is coming from. So it's not really sort of trying to hide the, the speakers, it's more to create a sound so it stops and helps people uh, think. I guess the best you could say about that was that they were excited in a sort of suppressed sort of way, but you know, it's all going to break out once they see those helicopters. Yeah.